what I meant to say at the end of uh, video number six was um, the reason why we were altering the budget constraint was so that we could have a better understanding of number seven, which is essentially graphically deriving now the demand curve. Here's what we know. We know this from back in chapter three, that there is an inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded of keyboards. As the price falls, people want more. We want to understand this a little bit better. So what we do is And just drawing out the demand curve, which we also know exists for vitamins. Let's start out by talking about vitamins here. Let's create a budget constraint and our utility with our indifference curve. And let's now have the price of vitamins falling. What would happen? Right? is that the budget constraint would pivot outwards and there would now be a point of tangency on a higher indifference curve. But now, what if right below that, I now represent the price of vitamins on the y-axis instead of the quantity of keyboards? Now what we know is that the price, let's say that the price went from P equals 5 to P equals 2. Well, then here, where the price was 5, that that was my quantity, the same quantity here. And that now, when the price is 2, the quantity is here. You start to connect the dots, and you get your demand for vitamins.